How we doing? It's Mailman Nick. Follow me on Instagram at Nick Venti. If you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up. Don't treat me like a 204B over here. And obviously, these are my own thoughts and opinions. I will not speak on behalf of the Postal Service. So I, I forgot on my computer, I got like the J cam. I got a bunch of grievances like right here. Um, Cause I could break them down grievance by grievance. And you guys can know your rights a little more. Uh, I got the national agreement down here and stuff. I'm gonna start off with the first uh, grievance that I have on here, which is Article One: Management performing management performing craft work. You know they most like most of the time can't do that. So I'm gonna read what it says so you guys can understand and know. You know that if you see like supervisors doing like stealing your guys' overtime or stealing your guys' money, then you know that's an issue. So it says on here, did management, so this is the issue statement like uh, on the PS form 8190, did management at the said station violate article 1.6, so this is article 1.6 of the national agreement when supervisor said name performed city letter carrier bargaining unit work on said date, and if so, what should the remedy be? And the remedy is basically like what the punishment should be like uh, when they like when they do like the 60 hour grievance, uh, you know, what's the remedy, how much like $5 a day that we weren't getting paid or, or $5 a day that, you know, every day that was violated or whatever, like it's usually money, which is a good thing. That's why the union's a good thing because they can get you some extra money and uh, punish supervisors for not following the contract. So union facts and contentions, block number 17, so this is just um, this is just the facts of Article 1.6. Um, so Article 1.6 of the National Agreement states, Section 6, performance of bargaining unit work. Supervisors are prohibited from performing bargaining unit work at post offices with 100 or more bargaining unit employees except, so this is except, uh, these are special cases, in an emergency, for the purpose of training or instruct instruction of employees to assure the proper operation of equipment to protect the safety of employees or to protect the property of the USPS. In offices with less than 100 bargaining unit employees, supervisors are prohibited from performing bargaining unit work except uh, in section uh, 6A1 through 5 above or when the duties are included in the supervisor's position description. Um, article one of the JCAM explains, oh, this is with 204Bs too. So the pro prohibition against supervisors performing bargaining unit work also applies to acting supervisors, 204Bs. Uh, and uh, letter carrier, 204B was in a 204B status on this date. This is documented by the PS form 1723 in the case files. So it's just kind of showing like how it would be written if you were filing a grievance against a 204B who was supposed to be doing supervisor duties when they were doing carrier work. So uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a bunch of these grievances on my computer. I could start doing a series. I just pulled up the first one I have. Um, the remedy, remedy block here. Let me see. The, uh, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, like information on here. Remedy block 19 on PS form 8190. That management sees and desists violating Article 1, Section 6 of the National Agreement. Um, that letter carrier each be paid at the ap applicable pay rate for the time supervisor performs city care so they'll get paid while they were this 204b was doing their work because that's supposed to be their money uh that all from the data which is used in the evaluation adjustment and routes that all payments associated with this case be made as soon as administra administratively possible but no later than 30 days from the date of settlement so yeah they usually have a remedy and then they usually have a deadline and then if they don't meet that deadline the uh the remedy will be more in the carrier favor. They're going to get punished even more. The proof of payment provided to any LC official upon payment and or any other remedy so that they'll notify like uh, your formal A's and stuff. 
But yeah, I got a whole bunch of these on my computer and I'm gonna go through them. Uh, I really didn't like, uh, I wasn't really like reading through them. I just kind of saw that. I'm like, all right, let me make a video real quick. Uh, I just woke up not too long ago. Uh, yeah, here's, here's an example of a remedy for this case so uh, or something like this. That letter carrier, name, name, and name, each be paid a lump sum of $100 to serve as an incentive for future compliance. So that's, uh, you know, this is, this is why the union is good because, you know, if you know your rights like this, you get free money for, for management filing the contract. You don't have to work that. If, if you would have worked that, you would have made the money, but you didn't have to work that and you're still going to get paid, so... Um, yeah, the only, the only time supervisors learn is by, uh, you know, by discipline, basically, like, you know, this is, this is how they learn the lesson, but they, but, you know, it's, they still violate, it's just, it is what it is. Um, yeah, that was an article, 1.6 grievance about, uh, supervisors doing, doing craft work. So, uh, the next one is. The next one I'll probably do, that's the next one I have on here, is Article 5 and 19 and 34, False Editing Clock Rings. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to just go one by one on these. No launch, improper denial of temp change of schedule, crossing crafts, aux route conversion. So a uh, 60-hour rule, I got a bunch of these that I'll start doing so you guys know your rights. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Hit that like button, and I'll see you guys soon.